Vogue, 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 Vogue. No copyright strikes, please. Okay. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel with Wendy. Recently I made a video where I showed four different DIY like red carpet accessories and I had people vote on which celebrity inspired accessory was their favorite. Billie Eilish came out very much on top. So I thought it'd be fun to just go a few more steps down that road and try to make two signature Billie Eilish silhouettes using thrift, DIY, sewing from scratch, etc. There's gonna be two looks in total with two DIYs. I hope you really enjoy them. First up, we're going to try to do this like monochromatic type of look. This I think is a little bit earlier in Billie Eilish's fashion timeline, but specifically I wanted to focus on the vest. In menswear, they're also often called gilets. I didn't know this word existed. These are the supplies I got to make my own. Two and a half yards of blue woven fabric, preferably something with a very sturdy weight to it. A 16 inch zipper that opens all the way at the bottom. One yard of fusible interfacing if you want your fabric to be even firmer. And two yards of batting. Everything is in blue because I managed to thrift a pair of blue pants, blue puffer, blue shirt, all in the same shade of blue. I'm gonna use this shell again. This is what I used to make my Cecily Banson inspired wrap coat from a thrift store blanket, but I think it's kind of the baggy fit that I want for the vest. I also like that it's a v-neck closure in the front, so it just makes it a little bit easier to trace and use as a template. But first, actually, we have to start with the pockets, which is a little unconventional. I have these pieces cut out by the way, I really need to introduce you at some point to my assistant, Julia, who's been super, super helpful. <laughs> She's making a face. She's been super helpful. There were four of these cut out, which becomes the lower hip pocket. Two of them I had interfacing cut out and we fused it on. And then another two of them are just as is. The interfacing is so that it has a bit more of that like cargo firmness since we prioritize matching color. We put in the interfacing and then we're just gonna stay stitch all the way around and this is now like one piece so that is the case for the pocket bottom and then for the pocket flap four pieces of blue fabric in total two of them have interfacing two of them do not these are all going to get paired up and the last piece of the fabric is the side wall because we want that like the bulky, I hate to say it, but it is kind of like Crocodile Dundee. Like it just gives you that like, you can put a lot of great stuff in this and go on an adventure type of pocket. Respect to Steve. Anyways, there's, that's so sad. Okay, and similarly, we're gonna sandwich these blue fabric with the interfacing and the blue fabric. These are going to become the wall. With the top flaps we're going to do something different which is sewing it right sides together as in blue touching blue just along the sides curve bottom curve side. It's good to give these corners a little bit of a snip then we can flip it right side out and then you'll just like push these rounded corners out as much as you can. Here's how the top flap looks after it's been pressed and here is how it is after I've added some top stitching. I did this line first, and then I did this one nice and close to the edge. It's time to join the pockets together. I did go ahead and press in a one centimeter edge along the wall, and that's just to make it easier to attach it to the actual vest. I sewed these two pieces along the entire curved edge right sides together, and that gets me this little creation, which I haven't flipped yet. I took pinking shears, these guys, sorry I'm sighing because I really am starting to have like a love-hate relationship with them. I cut all along the edge, which is just to like help reduce the risk of it fraying. You're basically like pre-fraying it is what's really happening. Anyways, as you can tell, uh, it didn't go amazingly. If you know what I'm doing wrong, let me know. My hands are like sore from using the shears and like my face was all red while cutting. But all that just so that the inside edge doesn't fray too much. Now you can flip it. And the first thing I'm gonna do is flip this top raw edge down, give it a straight stitch all the way across. Probably the moment where the pocket really like started to pay off for me visually was I pinched the seam between the front and the wall and gave it just like a skinny little top stitch all the way around. 
And now look, it has just such a nice like rigidity to it. And that edge that I pressed is now here ready and waiting for it to be attached to the jacket vest. So there's two pieces that make up the body of the vest. There, that's all there is to the vest, there's no arms. Okay, I'll insert a drawing here of what this piece looks like because it is too large to fit in one shot. But essentially I just traced one continuous piece that was like the whole back and the two fronts all joined in one. The back is what's different. I cut it with just a slight gentle curve across the top. And the reason for that is because to try to get the fit just right at the armholes, I did include a yoke. I don't think I've ever done a yoke on this channel. We're learning things, we're getting better. This is that missing piece that should go at the top of the back, and this is called the yoke. The main benefit is that this piece, now sewn separately to the back, gives you more leeway to adjust the armhole. Sometimes if the garment doesn't fit right at the arms, the back can flare out away from your body. The way you get rid of that is by using something like a yoke or a back dart to suck away some fabric right here by the hole. All that's gonna happen is I'm putting together the shoulder seams as well as the back yoke seam. If you want, you can also do one more top stitch to get the seam to lay nice and flat and that will get you this vest. And this is the part where I realized I look like a Walmart employee. <laughs> persevere, persevere. It's so blue. I got all my pocket pieces here. It is the utility look, so you can really go as many pockets as you like. The big one is gonna go here near the bottom. I'm gonna pin the entire thing in place using that edge that we ironed in. And then there'll just be a little bit of tricky maneuvering where you're just gonna have to like hold the pocket open while you put it through the machine. Yeah. We have entered day two of this process. So I spent all of last night attaching these pockets. I think I just spent the last half hour pinning one set of pockets. Oh, there has to be an easier way. I'm not even 100% sure if I have the right way, so I feel bad telling you how I did them. And I honestly did a different approach for every single pocket, which is probably not advisable. The first large pocket, I tried to reach in and pin this raw edge and then I tried to sew it, but then that did cause some bunching of the fabric. So then I had to undo the stitches where it bunched and then I hand stitched it together. That was pocket number one, pin first, hand sew second. Then I was like, hmm, what if I hand sew first, then use the machine second? The downside of that was you had to be pretty exact with your hand stitching or else you could end up pulling the fabric the wrong way. Out of all of them, that one might have worked the best though. Then I did an approach. I only pinned and machine sewed one half of the U and then I pinned and machine sewed the other half. That one was not bad as well. There has got to be a better way because there's no way they are mass producing these things the way I'm sewing them. So if you have any tips, please leave it in the comments and I will try to bring it up to the top. Then I spent the rest of the night attaching all these top flaps to the pockets. To do that, I pinned the pocket flap pointing upwards just a few millimeters away from the top opening of the pocket. And then we're gonna sew across here with a straight stitch. Once the flap is sewn on, then I flip it down and we add one more straight stitch across the top. Here they are. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Essentially, in this step, we are forming a vest sandwich. This is the identical vest that does not have any pockets. Then I have this piece of batting that has been cut into the shape of the vest. I traced this after I sewed the yoke onto the back of the vest just so that this was one continuous piece. And then the top layer will be this one that we've diligently been placing a pocket party on. I'm gonna sew this along the entire outside perimeter of the vest, and because the pockets also have quite a bit of weight to them, it would also be wise to add a few horizontal stitches. If you wanted a really puffy vest, then you would put in more batting so you could get like bigger layers in between the stitches. I'm gonna sew the shoulders of the batting together first and then pin it all together. The pins served really well as a rough guide point on lining up all of the seams and the curves. When I was putting it through the machine, it was really good to apply firm 
pressure, for good tension. Otherwise, I think it could have been really easy for the batting and the inner and outer layers to kind of misalign as it was going through. But I feel like it went okay. We were not sure if we wanted the pocket stitching to go all the way through. See, now this gets to be nice and blank. Also, because the pockets were really tricky to maneuver, we weren't looking forward to sewing through the batting. When it comes to the lines, I'm just gonna like come real close and then stop right before I reach the pocket. I think I'll do two lines in total. If you want bias tape that matches your fabric exactly, you should cut it out of the fabric and the key is you want to cut at a 45 degree angle to the grain. So if the weave is this way and this way, you got to cut strips this way. Julia helped cut a whole bunch of strips and then ideally you'd want to join them all together into one long strip. For that, what you want to do is make sure the 45 degree angle tip is on the same angle for both the two ends that you're trying to join. Give one of them a trim so they match, then open them up and sew them right sides together. You can trim off any excess fabric and then you'll want to press that little seam open as well as press that entire thing back into its folded position. And that gets you this big long chain of bias tape, which has one fold in it and the seams will lay nice and flat. Last time I did this in the wrap coat video, I joined the bias tape pieces together with a straight seam, and I saw a couple of comments of people saying that I should do it on an angle so that there's less fabric layering up in one place, so thank you. First, I take the right side of the bias tape and sew it to the inside or wrong side of the jacket. The goal is to sew exactly halfway between the raw edge of the bias tape and the folded edge of the bias tape. I also fold over the beginning of the bias tape so that when I make it all the way back around, the raw edge can be hidden underneath that fold. Then I flip the bias tape over to the front, give it a one quarter fold, and then bring it all the way over so that now I can sew along this folded edge and everything will be hidden away. I'm playing a game of chicken with this thread. And I am most definitely about to lose. I don't think I have any replacement thread. You never win at thread chicken. Ah! Hmm. They're equally far from the blue. <laughs> <laughs> I have a zipper to attach to finish this off. I am gonna tuck it in behind so that when it's zipped up, the two bias tapes kiss just lightly in the middle. To help make sure that the two edges really kiss with the zipper, I did a rough stitch with this red thread to connect them together. I just pinned the zipper down. Ow, I've been bleeding for this project. Anyways. On the inside, I just pinned the zipper down along the center. I do the pins pointing up on this side so that as the needle approaches, you can pull them out. I'm gonna undo this zipper and then sew along this edge and then along this edge and hopefully the zipper will be in. To prevent these from being open flaps, I will add a little snap closure to help them be closed, which will also pinch the top of the pocket a little bit. So if you have time, what's good would be to like fold this in and press it all the way around. Kind of just like how paper bags or large shopping bags are pressed. That finishes off the vest and to really pull it together, I took these thrifted pants, cut and hemmed them so that they were much closer to knee length. I also have these blue Hush Puppies shoes, which were also the perfect shade. And using the shoes that Billie Eilish often is seen wearing, the Gucci Flash Treks, I added a matching elastic band with crystals on top that were wrapped in aluminum foil to give them a little bit more of that like crystal inlay look. And here is how the entire Billie Eilish monochromatic silhouette came together. Stomping in my lingo, so wild I'm going bingo. Glasses look like Linda, I'm started, call me Ringo. Pause, continue, I'm balling like Mace Windu. Hotter than chili peppers, what I got you put it in.
Okay, I said we were gonna do two looks. So here's the second one. It's like collared shirts with something fitted underneath, a little bit of like a pajama glam sparkle. I thrifted this jacket in honor of her most recent hair color. We're gonna make a really easy lace top to go under this. Real simple, you will need two yards of stretch lace. Looking at this closer up, it seems like the entire inner top goes all the way to the tip of the gloves. That might be fun to wear for an event, but to keep things flexible out here, I've decided to chop it in the upper arm because then you can hide the break underneath a sleeve. So that gets us a pair of gloves, which I'll put on right now. Incredible, amazing. In a previous video, I did show how to make these elbow length slash opera gloves. So I will put a link in the description for that. We won't repeat those steps. I'm just gonna focus on what's gonna go with this to pull it all together. I feel so much fancier all of a sudden. If you've been a long time subscriber, I hope I'm about to give you that really gratifying feeling of knowing what is going on around here because we're just gonna make a shirt now. This is stretch lace and we purposefully found one that had a little bit of shimmer to it, which really excites me. You wanna take a knit sweater, something that has some stretch in it that imitates the stretch of the material. And then from that knit sweater, you can copy yourself a couple of pieces. You need one back, one front and two sleeves. Cha! And I'll put a link in the description for the video where I show how to take clothes that you already own and clone them to make more clothes. With these pieces, we're gonna sew the front and the back together, right sides touching along the two shoulders. Then we're gonna pin the sleeves to the armholes all the way along the curves, also right sides together. The next step after that will be to close up the entire shirt along the two sides, right sides touching, and don't forget to use a zigzag stitch for all of these since we are dealing with a stretch material. This is what you'll end up with after you've sewn the sides up. I also did hem the neckline so that I would stop risking tearing the fabric every time I tried it on. And for stretch fabric, generally you can just fold it in once and do a zigzag stitch all around. The original goal with the sleeve was I wanted it to be like mid arm and uh, to be honest, I still don't know how to do that right without literally just putting it on and testing it out. So this is a good sign in that this sleeve is already straight across when my arms are resting. That was the goal. So now I just need to measure how much fabric here I want to cut off. This is totally up to you. Some people think it's cuter when the sleeve shape points upwards a little bit, like it flares a little. Some people like it to go straight across. I don't think there's a lot of cuts where it goes downwards. But anyways, I'm gonna cut these straight across, hem them, and then I think there's only one step left before I get to try it all on. Oh, he's using a salad spinner. Dry lettuce awaits you. I went out and bought a very intense set of fake nails. Ooh. What would you say is the worst day in the entire year to go out looking for green nail polish. It's today, St. Patrick's Day. This is like the only green nail polish left in the store. I tried to create a way to paint these nails without generating new pieces of trash. And now this is definitely getting added to thanks I hate it on Reddit. What is this monster? You may be wondering how it all comes together with the gloves. If you zoom in real close to the photo of Billie Eilish's hands, you'll see that they're actually fingerling, is that the right term, gloves, and that at the tip, her finger is able to be visible so that the nail can I'm gonna cut off the tips of all the fingers on the gloves and hem them, and then you will get to see how it all came together. Run. 